Welcome back, Van family. Let's begin by warming up by reviewing some of the things that we worked on last time because it's a great way to really develop our skills. First of all, let's make sure that we are sitting on the edge of the chair, sit tall, left foot flat, right foot back. That'll give you the maximum amount of air. And playing euphonium or even especially tuba, we need a ton of air. So our, the way we sit is super, super important. Next, make sure you have your mouthpiece and have a mirror as well. Double check in the mirror your M face that we've been working on in our class video. M. Now that we have an idea of what that's supposed to look like, let's go ahead and begin by playing the air to sound buzzing exercise that we worked on last time. As you do this, make sure that bringing up the mouthpiece uh, it comes to you. Don't go to it, it always comes to you. Keep that chin nice and high. That air to sound exercise is a fantastic one to work on because it really helps us identify just how much pressure we need to produce that buzz sound. Starting out with just blowing air and then gently touching the lips together halfway through is an excellent thing to work on every day. Next up, let's try reviewing our instant sound exercise. This is basically the same thing as the air to sound, except instead of waiting to touch our lips together halfway through, we're gonna to touch our lips together from the very beginning. You'll notice that as I played that last exercise there, just like the one before, I always bring the instrument up, I pull it in, after I'm done playing, it comes off, and then back down again. That's a great habit to get into. At our last lesson, we talked about a common problem that some beginners have, which is the puffing of the cheeks. But fixing it is a great exercise for everybody to do because it really helps us understand the corner muscles. Those are the muscles at the corner of our mouth that not only prevent our cheeks from puffing out, it can actually help us get different notes. I'll show you what I mean. Let's try that exercise where we allow our cheeks to incorrectly puff out and then fix it by firming up the corners and bringing those cheeks back in. Note too that we are gonna fix the cheek puffing by using our muscles. We're not gonna like suck in our cheeks like that, like we're sucking in because we can't play euphonium and tuba by sucking in. We have to blow out to get that buzz sound. So you'll notice that as I firmed up my corners to bring my cheeks in, the note changed as well. That sound uh, got higher in pitch and that is a great way for us to understand the function of those firm corners. If I firm up the corners, I'm gonna get a higher note. That's gonna come in super handy now as we do our next exercise, the jets, high jets and low jets. The, these, this is the exercise that's basically the same thing as the instant sound, except that we're gonna explore doing higher and lower notes. As always, we wanna make sure the notes are very steady and even. Don't let them go up and down and don't let them stop and start. Think of the jets, we don't want it to go up and down as it's flying, and we certainly don't want the engines to stop in the middle as it's flying through the air. I'm gonna start by doing a high jet, which means I'm gonna firm up my corners. In addition, I'm also gonna use the tongue voicing that we talked about at our last lesson. You might remember that the position of our tongue can help us get different notes. If my tongue is up higher, like I'm saying E, I'm gonna get a higher note. If I drop my tongue down and say ah as I blow, I'm gonna get a lower note. Since we're working on high jets now, I want to think of uh, positioning my tongue as if I was saying T and then firming up my corners. Next up, let's try our low jets. This is exactly the opposite of the high jets. Instead of having firm corners, we're going to relax our corners. Don't relax them so much that your cheeks puff out though. That's too relaxed. And instead of saying E with our tongue, we're going to say ah with our tongue. We're going to drop that tongue. You can even think about dropping the jaw, especially on euphonium and tuba. Note that as you drop your jaw, don't let your lips separate as you blow, though. If your lips separate as your jaw drops, that means that you're not going to get any sound if your lips separate. Our last buzzing exercise combines those two. It's gonna go from high to low, it is the dropping bomb. It's basically like doing a high jet, immediately going into a low jet without stopping in the, in the middle. I'll start out by keeping my corners nice and firm to get that high note, and then I'll relax them as I go down. Same thing with my tongue. I'll start by thinking T with the tongue and then go T ah, and it's gonna help drop that sound. I'm gonna add an explosion sound at the end. You can do it as well if you'd like. Mm. 
Let's talk about how to assemble the euphonium. We're going to start by opening up the case, make sure it's on the ground, and usually on most euphonium cases there is a handle on one side. Have the handle pointed towards you but have it on the bottom. The thinner lid that's on top usually doesn't have the handle on it. Go ahead and unclasp the latches, open up the lid, and take out the euphonium. The euphonium only has two parts to assemble. The first is placing the mouthpiece inside the mouthpiece receiver, also known as the lead pipe. On this euphonium, it's right there, and I'm gonna insert the mouthpiece just like this, and then I'm gonna give it a push and a, sm a slight twist. By giving it a push and a twist, that will help keep the mouthpiece from falling out. I'm gonna demonstrate that again from the side. Normally, as you put that mouthpiece in, have it this way to help, uh, so that gravity helps you, but I'll show you the, from the side. As you put the mouthpiece in, I'm gonna twist it just this much as I push. So like, like, like that much. And the twisting just kind of helps it stay in place so it doesn't fall out on you. The second thing we need to do to assemble the euphonium is to adjust the tuning slide. On the front of the instrument, down at the bottom, there is this slide. It goes back and forth. And we want this slide to be open by about a, about a quarter of an inch. So there should be a little bit of space right there on that slide. We don't want to push it all the way in. We want to have it out just a little bit. The reason for that is uh, deals with the, the air temperature inside the euphonium. Um, think about this. Uh, if you had helium inside your lungs, what would happen to your voice? It would get higher, right? Helium is uh, less dense than normal air. It rises, and it also makes your voice higher. What about hot air? Hot air rises too, right? Like a hot air balloon. Yeah, that will also cause the pitch to go a little higher. I mean, you won't really notice it in your voice because the change is very minor, but you will notice it on an instrument. So if this instrument was filled with hot air, like maybe you're playing outside on a hot summer day and it's 100 degrees outside, the hot air inside this instrument will cause the sound to change in pitch. It'll go a little bit higher. Uh, and so we can use this uh, tuning slide at the bottom to compensate for that. We can pull out a little bit. The reverse is true as well. If the air in here was very cold, let's say you're playing outside in the middle of winter, uh, you could push this slide back in farther to compensate for the cold air that's inside the instrument. So that means that the room temperature setting for this is right about there, about a quarter of an inch out or thereabouts. So do have that, that uh, euphonium tuning slide pulled out every day. And a euphonium and a tuba basically operate the same way. A euphonium just has more tubing, and so it will also have a mouthpiece right there, and it'll have uh, the tuning slide down at the bottom. You might notice, too, that your three valves here also have slides on them, and each of those should also be pulled out about a quarter inch as well. Not the second one. That's such a tiny little one. Don't worry about that one. But for these other ones here, they should be pulled out just a little bit. Uh, a little behind-the-scenes uh, explanation. Um, on your instrument, this is your main tuning slide. On my instrument, it's this one right here. <laughs> this, uh, this euphonium is a little bit interesting in that it has a spring-activated main tuning slide. So if I operate this lever right there, it actually uh, extends that tuning slide out. It almost functions like uh, yet another valve. So yours does not have that. Um, but just in case I, you're curious, I was not entirely truthful just now. <laughs> on your instrument, this is the main tuning slide. On mine, it's back here. But you'll see that it's already out just about a quarter of an inch because we do want to make sure those slides are out just a little bit so that we can compensate for the air temperature. So let's talk about how to hold the instrument. The general way you're gonna hold the euphonium is you're gonna grab your left hand, wrap it around the instrument, and pick it up like that. So on this instrument, I'm gonna wrap my left hand around, I'm gonna grab it right here, and I'm gonna lift it up into plane position. And really, the left hand holds just about all of the weight. I mentioned earlier that I have that extra spring-loaded um, uh, key, so that's where my, my thumb goes right there. And I have a fourth valve that's actually operated by my, my first finger there. Um, you probably have a three valve euphonium, so those three valves are gonna be right up here, right on top. Um, for our right hand, different euphoniums are shaped differently. On mine, I take my right thumb and I put it right underneath this crossbar right there. I put the three fingers on top just like that, using my fingertips to touch the valves. My pinky floats free in the air. 
Some four-valve four euphoniums and tubas have the fourth valve operated by the pinky. In my case, it's the, the first finger down there. In any case, <laughs> have that pinky nice and relaxed. It's a little bit tricky on tuba and euphonium, but ideally we want to have our hand position the same as you would see on the trumpet section where our hand is curved like this. What we don't want to do is put our fingers all the way through and flat finger these valves where we're kind of going like this. We want to use our fast action by using our fingertips just like that. And that means that we need to hold all the weight of the instrument up with our left hand like this so that our right hand is free to operate the valves without having to also try to lift up the instrument. All the weight really should be in your left hand. Now, depending on how tall you are, you're probably gonna wanna rest the bottom of the euphonium on your lap like this. Um, and depending on the way it's shaped and depending on how tall you are, you, are, you might find that the mouthpiece is way too high. <laughs> That's okay. Just kind of uh, put it uh, on your lap and adjust your legs so that it's at the right height. For others of you, depending on how tall you are or the shape of the instrument, this may be way too low, in which case you need to grab your left hand and lift it up into position. Some euphonium players will actually get either a, a folded over towel and they'll place it in their lap on one leg and that helps bring the instrument up higher. Others attach a special stand. It's like a little spike that that attaches to the bottom and that spike sits on their chair and so they're they don't need any uh, uh, support from their left hand at all because it's basically um, resting on their chair but your euphonium your chair your situation work it out that you can hang onto the instrument usually with all your all the weight in your left hand and that way the right hand is free to operate those valves most importantly we want to make sure that this main lead pipe here enters our face nice and straight in. Don't have it off to the side. Don't have it down below or up above. You want to make sure that it's coming straight into your face. If you look at this from the side view, it's going to come straight in. One other thing to note is that on my particular instrument, the, two, the mouthpiece comes off on this side. On your instrument, it might come off of this side. It might be basically reversed where you have um, the mouthpiece over here. And that's fine too. Um, in fact, you might even have uh, many euphoniums. You still hold it all with the left hand here, but then the valves will be right here in front of the instrument. So if that's the way yours is, same thing. Wrap your left hand around the instrument, put your right hand over here and operate the valves just like this. Two different styles of euphoniums, like the left or the right, and tubas are the same way. Some have the mouthpiece coming off the left side. Some of them, it's coming off of the right side. So let's go ahead and play our euphoniums. Uh, what I want you to do is to bring it up into plain position. Remember, it's gonna come to you, okay? And then I'm gonna have you play a note. Think of it like a, like a jet or an instant uh, sound note. Take a deep breath and hold that note as long as you can. How'd you do? Were you able to bring the mouthpiece right up to you, play a note, and then come down again? Hopefully you were. You'll notice that as I'm playing, I'm gonna bring it up into position, bring it into my face, play, pull it off my face, bring it down into my lap. And that kind of rest position, the instrument is just uh, horizontal laying in my lap, just like this. As always, I wanna make sure I'm sitting at the edge of the chair, left foot flat, right foot back, because I wanna get maximum air. Without using any valves, because we're not gonna use the valves this week, not yet. Without using any valves at all, I can get several different notes on a euphonium or a tuba. We call these the open notes. They're the notes we can play without any valves at all. So that was one of the three main notes we're gonna work on this year that are open notes. I'm gonna demonstrate some other ones for you as well. But first, let me tell you their names. Music notes have names like A, B, C, D, they're letters. And the notes we have on this particular instrument for the low, medium, and high open notes have names. The low open note is called B flat. That flat symbol in music looks like a um, half of a heart with a line through it. And the middle open note on a euphonium is an F. And the high open note is, well, it's also B flat. Well, that's weird, <laughs> not really. When you think about it, it's not that uncommon to have parents who might have the same name as their child. So you might have a mom named Sally and her daughter could also be named Sally or a dad named Jimmy and his son is also named Jimmy. So same thing on, on these notes, we have a high and a low B flat, same name, two totally different notes. They might be like parent and child. And then the middle open note in between is called F. 
I'm going to play each of these notes for you. But first, I'm going to help you figure out how to identify them. We're going to use the Bandmate app. So I have here a device with Bandmate on it. First thing I need to do is I need to select the instrument. Now, if you're playing tuba, you would select tuba. Easy enough. If you're playing euphonium, it doesn't call it a euphonium in here. It calls it baritone bass clef. That's the second option near the top baritone bass clef. You'll notice there's actually another baritone in there that says baritone treble clef. So that is the same instrument. It's still a euphonium, also known as a baritone, but the music is written totally different. Uh, baritone treble clef is usually, that music is usually used by people that are trumpet players that also want to play euphonium, and the notes are written as if they were playing them on trumpet. Um, it's also used in England in British brass bands. They will have all their music written as if it's being played by a trumpet player and they just use a different instrument. So for them, all their baritone parts are written as treble clef. But here in the United States, the vast majority of our music is written as baritone bass clef. So that's what you'll be reading this year. Baritone BC, baritone bass clef. And again, the instrument is probably more correctly called a euphonium. A true baritone looks a little different, but... Eh, We'll go with it. Baritone BC, baritone bass clef. So you'll notice I played three different notes. I played the low B flat, the middle F, and the high B flat. The low, the middle, and the high open notes that we're going to work on this year. Uh, I should point out too that there's a lot more open notes above that high B flat, but this year in fifth grade, we're gonna focus mainly on those three open notes, and those are great notes to start it with right now. I want you to try this using the Bandmate app and see which note you get. Chances are you'll probably get the same note multiple times in a row. So you, maybe every time you get the, the F, or maybe you get the high B flat. Uh, in time though, as you practice this a little bit every day, you'll get better at playing uh, at least two of those notes this week, either the middle F and the high B flat, or maybe the middle F and the low B flat. And eventually you'll get good at playing all three of those. So each day I want you to practice by doing this. Start out by doing mouthpiece buzzing, air to sound, instant sound, high jets, low jets, dropping bombs. Then put your instrument together and without using any valves, I want you to play at least two of those different notes and get good at them. If you can get good at playing all three, even better. So. Until next time, go practice.